Uh, I'd be very, very pleased with herself, but here's someone else who's reason to be pleased. And so he should be. Sport boy of Namibia is a minute and 13 seconds ahead of the chasing group, which is led by Kim of Korea. And, and Kim of Korea is a few seconds ahead of Boniface Mirandi of Kenya, and then Paul Evans. So Paul Evans in fourth place, still some work to do, still an opportunity for Paul Evans, but he was being cl closed down upon by Mark Clutches of South Africa and USA a few minutes ago when I still last saw Paul Evans. So he worked hard to get up to second place, which is the highest he got in the last few miles. But then he's lost that second place. He's down to fourth now. But like I said earlier, nobody's going to be working harder. Nobody's going to be trying any harder. He's desperate to prove himself on the world scene. And this is the opportunity to do it. There's Kim in second place, who's over a minute behind the leader. And if you judge by what they did in the Olympic Games, well, Korea are now a world force in the marathon. Kim was 10th in the Olympic marathon. His teammate Huang won that race. But sport boy, Namibia. Well, could he be on his way to win Namibia's first ever world or Olympic gold medal? Some of the smart money was on him. I must say everyone thought that uh, maybe his first major international gold medal would be Frankie Fredericks. And I think possibly Frankie Fredericks thought that. I wonder if he's watching this, having just qualified for the semi-final of the 100s. A two-man team, I wouldn't be surprised, because there are television sets below where the athletes go out. Well, I've got to say, he looks absolutely great at this point in the marathon he must feel great he must know he's well away now over a minute ahead looking strong looking comfortable Kim in second place working hard well the news he got from downstairs was that Frankie Fredericks knew all about his his teammate his only teammate leading in the marathon and when he finished qualifying for the 100 meter semi-final he went up to the television monitor just off the side of the track and, and sat down and watched it. Apparently he's still there. Well, there's the time gap you can see. And the last time we saw it, it was well over a minute. And they're looking down the road. Mark Clatches is coming through. Mark Clatches is moving into third place now, ahead of Boniface Mirandi of Kenya. And he's closing down on Kim. Well, he's rolling all over the road, but he's prepared to work for it. So, Kim in second place. Mark Clatches of the USA, formerly South Africa, in third place. And look at the time gap. That's the time gap that Kim is behind the leader, and he's pulling further away. Over a minute and a half behind the leader. And not comfortably ahead of Mark Clatches either. Number 790 there, Boniface Mirandi of Kenya, he's in fourth place. And I wish we could just get a little bit further down the road. And I wish this person here would get off the road. You're not allowed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. And there's no benefit to the leader to have some German jogger running alongside him. Well, it's not just uh, the fact there's no benefit, it's an irritant. Well, I think he might have got the message about that. Well, short boy looks comfortable there. And um, here's his mate again. Well, he's getting all the information he needs from the lead car. Oh, I think someone is listening to us, told him to get off the road. We won't have any of it. Well, a minor distraction for Schwartz boy, but he's happy now just to get his head down and just to chase if there's any opportunity to relax. But he'll know about the gap. Some, he'll, have, he'll have the information being supplied to him, and if he reads the clock on the lead car, that will give him some information too. 36 kilometers, 6 kilometers to go in the marathon. Well, 
Well, it would be nice to be able to look down the course now. They're crossing back over the River Necker and back towards the stadium. And it's a little cooler now, so they'll appreciate the drop in temperature. But I notice at every feed station, they've nearly all of them got as much as they can on board, as much drink as they can on board. And there we're looking at the race for second place. Kim on the inside, the Korean being closed down rapidly by Mark Platches. Platches has run a storming couple of miles here. He's come from nowhere, and now he's challenging for second place. Well, that would be a great result for Mark Platches if he could get a medal in the games he never thought he'd see. He never dreamed he'd be able to run internationally. He gave up hope for that and then went to America. And I bet there's no one trained harder for this race. 35 kilometers, 149. That's about two hours, 12 pace. So it's not excessive pace, even though the second half of the race for this man is going to be faster than the first half was. You notice he's getting water to drink he's got his own drink too so he's feeling the pressure of the heat and there you can see the flag with his country name namibia on it just over 20 minutes away from the gold medal which if he can control himself for the next three or four miles then that gold medal certainly can be his. And there's Platches in second place now. He's running a blinder. Kim struggling there, and he slowed, obviously, but Platches is running really strongly. The last three or four miles of a marathon are obviously the testing miles. But sometimes when you're starting to catch people, you can get a little bit carried away and go a little bit faster than you want to, and the Korean won't give it up without a fight. But Mark Platches senses a major games medal. I'm sure he'd retire happy if he got that. But Kim's following him in second place in there. A minute and a half down the road. Look at Swartboy of Namibia. Certainly showing no signs of distress. Well, the drama slowly unfolding on the roads. Well, his third place in the Boston Marathon earlier this year suggested that Sport Boy could be a contender in this race. And now it's all about him. Well, meanwhile, we're coming back into the stadium.